Welcome to Calvary Bible Baptist Church. It's a Wednesday night. We're doing a Bible study. Our text is 1 Timothy 5, 23, if you turn there. And while you're turning there, I'd just like to uh, bring something to your attention, kind of set the tone for tonight's Bible study. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Your Lord and Savior spoke that when he walked the earth. We're in a time when uh, we're getting very close to his return. And we're told that men would be traitors. And uh, the news media today is all uh, excited and uh, uh, things are uh, debating and flying around over the events that are really going to lead to the Great Tribulation very soon. So I just let you know that um, being a saved, born-again Christian, uh, we are to resist and withstand evil, uh, but we should not be troubled by it as we come closer to the Lord's return. Uh, everything that um, the um, people are contending over, really, either way it goes is good for a Christian because it brings the Lord's return closer. So um, where I'm sad for my country and things that are taking place, um, I hope the Lord returns very soon. Okay, let's get into tonight's Bible study. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. Let's open a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be Christians, and Father, we thank you for your goodness and your truths and Father, where people aren't receiving them today, pray that hearts would open and soften to the truth and salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now the reason I say that is the Bible says in the last days they will not endure sound doctrine. And uh, people think sound doctrine is something like uh, how many uh, angels are on the head of a pin. Sound doctrine is moral, righteous, godly teaching of God's truth. And so here we have a scripture verse that would not, is not well received today. It would save a lot of pain, a lot of misery, a lot of loss, a lot of uh, heartache. Uh, it would stop murders. It would stop rapes. It would, it would make the world a better place. This one verse. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thy often infirmities. And why is that? Because substances are for medication of infirmities, which are not to be abused by those who lack Christian discipline, Christian character, and a Christian spirit to walk in the spirit. You see, the Bible is very clear, and it's a wonderful book. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there uh, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of nations. Now, that has a greater spiritual and doctrinal uh, significance than I'm going to teach tonight. I just wanted to bring your attention that uh, the things of this earth, um, such as using the alcohol to sedate the stomach that is troubled by an individual, is God's mercy and love and when we abuse and misuse substances, we destroy ourselves. Those who foolishly seek their pleasures from substances rather than the Lord are certainly not walking in the Spirit. Job said, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That's the desire of most human hearts. It's such a desire that they're teaching a false prosperity doctrine, sending people to hell with it, because people will not endure sound doctrine and truth. But it's also a truth, and see the, but it's if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. When Christians actually obey God, and do things God's way, 
it will work to their prosperity and their pleasure. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. And that's the case of most of human history. Wars and rumors of wars, right up to the time that the Lord returns. There's a path of life led by the Spirit of the Lord that brings natural pleasures and joy to the obedient soul. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. What most people miss is all the simple, glorious uh, pleasures of earthly life lived godly. There are so many little pleasant pleasures and a way of prosperity in the Lord. But most people coveting it are destroying their souls. And then they are sedating their souls with medications for health through self-medication and self-destruction. Christians, which do so, are revealing their failure to walk in the Spirit and understand spiritual things. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under lust. I, I, I just give you a little simple example. There's nothing like a summer evening where it's been a little bit of a stuffy day and now it's cooled down and your soul is at rest with God and your life is at peace and a nice breeze comes through refreshing you and it just brings a simple little pleasure of joy. Well, there's many, many other pleasures like that for those that would live a godly life. And that's what, that's what most humanity and most Christians today have missed completely. They've missed God's joys and God's pleasures. And so they lust for carnal pleasures which intoxicate and then destroy and bring misery. Gloom, despair, and agony. Intoxicants are not for kings and people of responsibility. And that's really what the issue is. People do not, if they obey, people do not want to be responsible to God for right and proper conduct. They want to cheat and take with violence that which their flesh lusts for. And there will be no real pleasure. It will be a pleasure of sin for a season and then destruction. It is not for kings, O Emmanuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now, that's what I see when I watch our newscasts and, and our news media. And I see the debates of our nation. I see a perverting of judgment. I watched a man, and I, and I, I can't give it to you in any more detail because I want this to be a, a Bible study that people can look at five years from now. But I watched a man come up with human thought and human reason. And I want to tell you, he sounded awful good. And it sounded like uh, everything was going to be okay. But what he missed is this. It was not biblical. And what he missed is the plowing of the wicked is sin. When you do right without God, it is sin. You've got to have God in your life, and you've got to be walking in his spirit to enjoy his blessings and his pleasures and his joys. 
There's just no other way to do it. And if you don't do that, all you'll have is a continual nagging of your flesh in lust to a craving for pleasures that will be self-destructive. Strong drink could be administered and used to sedate bitter hearts, but there was never a license for self-medication, which leads to addiction. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. I had a pastor friend of mine that developed cancer, and they have more powerful drugs today from the leaves of the field. And they were administering them to him, and uh, he had a very short time to live, and his pain and discomfort increased more and more. And somebody said to him, and boy, I'll tell you, people miss it. Well, you're a minister. Why are you taking uh, these drugs? And it's like, what, we got a blockhead here or what? And it's like, I'm going to die in a couple months. And you see, God in his grace and mercy gives strong drink unto him that's ready to perish. But that's not for kings to drink. That's not for the normal person to drink and self-medicate to drown out one's sorrows and thereby become addicted and become a monster. And that's what people do. We'll see that in a few moments. And wine to those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. And of course, the danger of it is in all your medifications, all your intoxicants, from alcohol to drugs, which alcohol is just another drug. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. It's for medicinal, medical purposes. It's not for abuse. The substance of drugs and alcohol, when abused, destroy. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thy eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. Intoxication brings out the wickedness of the heart so that people speak perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth on the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I, I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. See the addiction it possesses, it controls. And those who are entering therein are not wise and deceived thereby. Scriptures place a curse on the distributor of intoxicants, and life has bore this curse out quite often. I've known several individuals that have had uh, drinking establishments, and every one of their lives turned into a life of misery, divorce, uh, child neglect, problems. I never see anybody yet uh, retire from having a drinking establishment in uh, peace, tranquility, and joy. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned on to thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. It induces the sexual revolution and immorality of our time through the use of intoxicants, from alcohol to the severest drugs, heroin and coke and hash and all and uh, all the things you can list, LSD, and they, they open up a Pandora's box of evil. And that's what's hit America. Whoa. 
Christians are to keep themselves pure as all drunkards and substance abusers utter perverse things. Thy eyes shall behold strange women, thy heart shall utter perverse things. Many sins are open as the substance abusers, sins generally are, and they lead the soul to eternal damnation and the flesh to physical ruin. Let him that is taught in word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. And that's what church is all about. I'm trying to communicate to you good things to keep you from going to hell and keep you from destroying your life and having an ever-increasing, deeper, deeper hole you dig as you become addicted, as you become more perverse, as you do more wicked things, and then you take more sedations to, to cover the pain and the sorrow of your heart. To your destruction. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap as we faint not. Now, what you need to understand as a Christian, if you're doing well, you're in a sin-filled, sin-cursed world. There's a curse on this world. After Adam and Eve sinned and sinned in the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned, sin infected the entire creation. Well, what you're going to have in well-doing is if you will walk in the Spirit, you'll have God's joy, you'll have God's peace, but you're still going to constantly have this world failing you. Your equipment's going to break down. It's going to get old. It's going to age. It's going to rot. It, it's going. Your, your body is going to fall apart. I'm 63 years old, and I can't wait to get to my dentist. All I want for summer is my two front teeth. Say, what happened to them? They just wore out. They ain't no good. No more, no more. But that's life under a curse. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, the curse is going to be lifted. And then we're going to have joy and pleasures evermore. But there's still, in this life, under this curse, there's still a blessed life for the soul to have if it will walk in the Spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, other sins will be judged by God in eternity. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Now we have a certain individual that was a very prominent um, television and uh, star, and this man, uh, obviously it looks like he committed some very heinous crimes, and he did it for the last 30 years. And nobody knew about it, but he was committing them except God and the individuals upon whom they were perpetrated. And uh, all of a sudden, they're following after him, and they're catching up with him. Now, you have to extrapolate that a little more. Some people do commit the perfect crime and get away with it in this life, but they won't get away with it in the life to come. And that's rare. Usually, most people end up sowing what they reap sooner or later. They have enough time. The judgment of eternity, be it the saints at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, will be judged in righteous judgment. Now, I'm finding this in the Christian community today, and it's uh, somebody's teaching a lot of false doctrine. Uh, and what it is, they're teaching that, uh, oh, well, we're saved by grace through faith, and all of our sins are forgiven, our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins, which is true and correct, and that's wonderful, but somebody's resting the scriptures and say, well, so now you've got a license to do what you want to do and sin and get away with. No, you don't. You were given liberty from sin, not license to sin in your salvation. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See, we're going to have a judgment as Christians. We're not going to have our soul in danger of damnation, but we're going to have a 
judgment as Christians, and we've got much to lose in this life and the life to come. You can lose your life prematurely. You can lose body parts prematurely. You can lose your health. You can lose your, your family and the life to come. You can lose your inheritance and your rewards and your stars and your crowns without losing your soul. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. We're trying to persuade you to walk in the Spirit. And if you're not saved, you must be born again. And we're trying to persuade you to receive Christ through repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, that your soul may be saved, and then walk in the Spirit that you may obtain the peace and the joy of God in this life. Amen. And not harm and hurt other people. And of course, the terrifying judgment, the worldling at the great white throne. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. I don't care what television is telling you. I don't care what the false prophets are telling you. I'm telling you what God says. And God has a time when every worldling who's never been born again, who's never repented of their sins, who's never trust Christ, will stand before him and give account. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead will judge all those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Why? Because they were trusting in their works. I'm going to heaven not because what I've done, but because what Jesus Christ has done. I'm putting my faith and my hope in Jesus Christ who paid the penalty for my sins on Calvary's cross and only ask that I repent to the Father and put my full trust in Him, Amen. which I've done. Amen. How about you? Get saved, because, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. Watch this. This is you, my friend. I hope not. It should not be. We don't want it to be. Trying to persuade you for better things. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast like a fire. If you're not in the Lamb's book of life, by being born again through a spiritual birth of repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be in the Lamb's book of life, and you'll be cast in the lake of fire. God's judgment will be absolutely complete and thorough. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak. People think they're getting away with things because they don't have a quick and swift judgment today. You're not getting it. Everything's being jotted down. That every idle word that men shall speak shall they give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy word shalt thou be justified, and by thy word shalt thou be condemned. I am so glad I've got a Savior because I've got a lot of words out there that would put me in hell. And I got a Savior that's given me eternal life. God's judgment will be absolutely incomplete and thorough. The revelation of the truth is that some men get caught in their sins openly here and now and must be judged. So that's why we have government. Judges and officers, thou shalt make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee through thy child. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. That is the full purpose of government. That's what government should be doing before anything else. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore that resisteth the power resisteth ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive themselves as damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger. Look at that. He's a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doth evil. 
Wherefore, ye must need be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Be assured, all men's sins eventually catch up with them in this life or in the life to come. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pay. Now, we had a situation just recently where I believe they were Christians because of their capacity to forgive where a man took a gun and shot nine people in church. And he took that gun and shot those nine people in church, and then when they had the arraignment, all the family members in that forgave the man. That's what Christians do. Now it's the job of the government to try him and execute him and be a revenger of wrath so that we can forgive and the law can repay. That's the way it's supposed to work. You want to be careful, though, on how you judge things. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Marvel is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You know, as a Christian, the truth of it is, many men have claimed their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. God's not looking for you to be perfect. He's looking for you to be faithful. If you'll be faithful, you'll improve. And you'll walk in the Spirit. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me of the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both bring the light, the hidden things of darkness, will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. There again is the admonition against respected persons. See, that's the problem with the political situation in America today. People are, are, are all tuned in. They're looking for an individual to save them. They're looking for a leader, and uh, they're about to get the devil. But if you would not respect persons and read God's word and receive his truth, your eyes would be open and you'd see what's going on and you'd see the world rushing violently into the great tribulation, which is drawing very close. You say, when is it, preacher? I know not the day or the hour. God never put me on a need-to-know basis. He just told me to be faithful, Amen. and the same for you. You see, there's where humility comes, and when people start predicting the day of the Lord's return, you got a person full of pride trying to be somebody rather than obeying him. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifested beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Now, truth is self-evident, and time is a revealer of the heart. Here's where you want to be as a Christian. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God should bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You don't need to keep his commandments to be saved. You need to keep his commandments to be right with him. If you're a born-again Christian, if you've repented of your sins, and if you put your trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and if you haven't, you're going to hell no matter what you do because you can't do good enough, and you haven't done good enough. God will bring everything into judgment. Nobody will get away with anything without God's righteous judgment upon it. O oh, generation of vipers, Jesus said, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. 
But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. There it is again. For by thy word shalt thou be justified, and by thy word shalt thou be condemned. It was right and exemplary that those families forgive the heinous crimes of the murder. But it's also right that the government bear the sword in vain, a revenger of wrath. But on a personal basis, if ye, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. How can you ask forgiveness if you won't forgive? You can't be a beacon if your life won't shine. And nothing shines brighter than the grace of forgiveness. Of all the things I've seen in the last couple years, nothing moved my soul more than those poor, beleaguered, hurting, breaking family members forgiving the murder. I saw godliness. I saw righteousness. Because that's what God did. He forgave us if we will just repent and trust his shed blood. But it's only right now that the government fulfill its responsibility so we can forgive as individuals. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and fleeth into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. Thy eyes shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel that it may go well with thee. That's the way we need it to be in America today. We need a government that's just and that bears the sword in wrath against the evil so that the people of America, the citizens, can forgive one another and learn to walk in God's grace. The failure of the government to enact swift justice and just justice can contributes to the crime rate and the further injustice of a nation. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. The more you allow evil to get away with it, the more evil will perpetrate itself. There's an old proverb that's not a biblical proverb, but it says you give them an inch, they'll take a mile happens every time. But it's biblical in nature. Good works will likewise find you out. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence the full assurance of hope unto the end that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Don't need a lot of patience in this world because uh, it's, a, it's a world under a curse. And whatever can go wrong will go wrong. <laughs> Murphy's Law rules until Christ comes back and rules. A godly, faithful Christian should be able to ask for... Uh, goodness, having ministered in godly goodness. Now look at this. This is the way you should be able to pray with a pure heart if you want God to bless you. Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Thus cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the wards of the priests and the Levites, every one in his business, and for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits. Remember me, O oh my God, for good. There's a man that set the office of the priest in order and righteousness, stopped the corruption, and asked for God to remember him for good.
You ought to be able to pray that prayer as a Christian. But it better be a true one if you want God to bless you. Because hypocrites are not blessed. The joy of a hypocrite is but for a moment. Let as many servants as under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. God is blasphemed when a servant does not count their own master worthy of all honor. To rebel against a good master is blasphemous to the Lord, yet the man after God's heart would not rebel against an evil Lord. I'm going to drop this off here for a length of time. We'll pick it up next week. We'll see David's conduct. Then came David to Nob, to Amalekit, the priest. And Amalekit was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? David was fleeing for his life. His master was trying to kill him. He refused to stretch forth his hand against his master. He would not harm, so he fled. He didn't divide the kingdom. He didn't shred the kingdom. He didn't, he didn't repay an evil lord and an evil master. He put him into God's hands and put his trust in the Lord. David fled alone. And David said unto Amalekit the priest, The king hath commanded me business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my service to such and such a place. Now I'm going to skip down. I just want to catch this. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. If David would not stretch forth a hand against a murderous and heinous master, God have mercy on the Christians that smite the godly leaders authorities, and pastors. It's going to be a terrorizing judgment at the judgment seat of Christ for those Christians, and I've seen a lot of it, smiting the innocent. Look at this character. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once. I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed, but I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. You know, your Savior was holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. David was a man after God's own heart. He wouldn't, he wouldn't smite his master. And his master was a heinous criminal. But all through America, Christians are attacking their preachers and their teachers that are just teaching them the truths of God's word without cause. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be Christians. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your truths. We thank you for your words and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have an invitation.